What's the current crisis in Ukraine? Okay, so basically what happened is that the, um, the SEAL Team 6, which uh, had taken down Osama previously, was kidnapped. And they were, like, taken hostage into Ukraine. So President Obama is negotiating what sort of, you know, a package to send them. They're demanding many things, like uh, like destruction of NATO and also destruction of the UN, but the U.S. is holding out on them. Navy, Teal, Seal, Teal, Navy SEAL Team 6 is still in a hostage crisis, and they're being tortured. And I don't understand why President Obama won't do what it takes to get those heroes back. Uh, what's the current crisis in Ukraine? I have absolutely no clue. So, that's about it. What's the current crisis in Ukraine? Oh my gosh, don't ask me this stuff. Do you not know? No. What, you don't know anything at all? No, seriously, stop. Oh. It's a documentary. Hey, what do you know about the Ukraine? Nothing. Well, what do you know about the Ukraine? Uh, absolutely nothing. Okay. What do you know about the Ukraine? It's in Europe, maybe. This is Megan Harold of the Centennial Act Deck team. Uh, what do you know about Ukraine? I can't read. What do you know about the Ukraine, Eric? I don't know anything. Ever. But you're Asian. <laughs> What's the current crisis in Ukraine? I don't know. Uh, can you point it out on the map? Mm. Mm. It's, it's, right, it's right there. It's right there. Yeah. Can you spell Ukraine? U K R A I N E. Good job. What do you know about the Ukraine? Ukraine? Uh, not, not, not much. Um, um, is this, is this going to affect my GPA? What do you know about the current crisis in Ukraine? <laughs> um, I have no clue. All right, thank you. Um, Russia and that one guy. His name. Vladimir Putin. Yeah, Vladimir Putin. Uh, he wanted to take land, and he did take land. He took like this bottom portion of Ukraine, this little small part that is very uh, not how <clears throat> uh, that part of Ukraine that they took only gets about um, it took 90% of its um, energy from the rest of Ukraine, so it's going to cost a lot of money to. Um, preserve that part of land for Russia, so it was just a good idea to even take that part of land. And at the moment, I don't think Russia is really trying to take the rest of Ukraine. But. Uh, do you know anything about the current crisis in Ukraine? Very little. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say now. <laughs> Can you explain anything that's happening? Uh, I believe Putin is sending um, troops into places that the Ukraine doesn't. Uh, that uh, Russia doesn't actually run those places. Is that correct? <laughs> Can you briefly describe the current crisis in Ukraine? Uh, from what I understand, uh, Russia is trying to take back some of what they believe to be their land uh, from when they were the Russian Empire, and now Ukraine does not want to give it up, so that's causing some distress in the area. Uh, that's about as much as I know about it. So. All right. Do you know anything whatsoever about the Ukraine? I know, like, like they did something with Russia happened, and then they didn't get to the EU, or I don't know. That's about it. But so <laughs> well, the president of the Ukraine wouldn't sign the Ukraine into the European Union, and so the citizens of the Ukraine decided that they were going to take it upon themselves to try and get the president to flee the country, form a change. They kind of started rioting, created uprising, then president had to leave. So in Ukraine what happened is that initially the prior president, I believe, I forgot his name, it's really long, it's like 
Ukrainian. But um, so Russia and Ukraine had a deal, right, from years and years. So what happened is that Ukraine would give up their nuclear arms in exchange for money and monetary support from the Russians, which happened in the 90s. However, Russia never like, kept their part of the deal, and they took away the nukes. Like, Ukraine gave away their nukes before they got any money. And so that's the, one of the first things that happened. But then later, prior or this year, what happened is that the president of Ukraine, he promised a large percentage of the Ukrainian population that they would join the EU. However, he then signed a deal with the Russian president in order to help the Ukrainian economy. And a lot of people, they protested in Kiev because of one main reason, because they wanted to join the EU and they did not want to be more part of Russia. And that led to the protests that were in Kiev and that led to the, um, the overthrow of that president, the prime minister, whatever his name was. Then what happened is that Russia tried to annex Crimea because they said that there were Russian nationals or Russian members who spoke Russian who were in Ukraine who they had to protect because of the overthrow and chaos that was happening in Ukraine. And so what happened is as they threatened to annex Crimea and Russian troops are put on the border. Now, there have been Russian nationalists inside Ukraine ever since the Soviet Union. They're planted there by, what's his face? by Stalin to make sure that the Soviet Union had some sort of nationals and basically what his plan was and what he did was he put Russian speaking soldiers and military members like their families in different areas in the Soviet Union. And so as a result, the Soviet Union was, put, was a, had a way to have everything together. They were able to, able to have some sort of national identity and they were able to keep any sort of uprisings in check back then. And then what happened is those Russian nationalists who felt more Russia than Ukrainian did not want to be part of the EU, even though like the Western part of the EU did, or Western part of Ukraine did want to be part of the EU. They started uprising, they started having all these revolts, and they started having these clashes with the Ukrainian military force. And what happened was, is that after the president of Ukraine was kicked out, there was an interim period where there really wasn't a president. And now there have been exit polls showing that, I believe, the one of the, um, Former, I totally forgot his name. One of the former, like, he was a chocolate man or something like that. He had a chocolate industry. He's the person who's most likely going to be the Ukrainian president, and he's on the side for basically the EU. And not only that, uh, I'm not uh, completely sure on the other stuff, but on the EU or sorry, not EU, the Ukraine situation. Um, you want me to tell you everything? Wait, what did you just say? The current crisis in Ukraine can be summarized as something that is between a civil war and also an international crisis. The first part of which is where there are Ukrainian separatists that are definitely in favor of Russian promotion, well, as of Russian annexation of Crimea, and furthermore are fighting against the newfound government under Poroshenko, the recently elected president of Ukraine. The other side is an international crisis in which NATO is trying to battle Russia for international hegemony within Eastern Europe, which is also stemming into an Eastern European and Western European energy crisis based upon Russia's control of natural gas. There are also several other factors, but I could go on for hours. What do you know about the current crisis in Ukraine? I know that it's a total mess and that the information that we receive from the media is part of it probably partially true, just like all media information, and that no one knows the whole truth and nothing but the truth except the folks that are over there involved in it. 